Why should we care about peatlands? Well, basically we need to do a lot of education about peatlands. Because in general, peatlands were, were looked for as a wasteland, which is not the case. Peatlands plays an enormous role in terms of uh, uh, climate mitigation and also in the livelihood of people who are living in those areas. So peatland doesn't mean at all wasteland. They are very productive land. There is this interesting remark that a lot of people see peatlands as wastelands. Why do you think they have that impression? Uh, that's because what happens is when you see peatlands, you are looking different swamps, different areas that you will going to find different snakes, animals, and so on, so on. So almost everybody is afraid of that. So that, that's why many people believe that those are wasteland. That's, that's not the case, that's life. And it's interesting because peatlands often fall at a you know, gray zone between conservation and economic development. Sometimes these interests uh, might conflict what do you think is the best way to reconcile these interests and to create more communication uh, between government and the local communities when it comes to managing peatlands? What happened is, in general, as a matter of education, the way that we go to the university, that we, the way that we get our education, because we believe some people are foresters, other people are agronomists, other people are biologists, other people are fish management or fisheries, and everybody goes in different directions. But we are talking about peatlands, we have to work together to understand each other, because that's the only way to understand well what peatland is all about, and how to manage well the peatlands. We go in different directions, different directions. We are wasting our time, just because we are losing the opportunity to work together and to understand very well that ecosystem that needs to be well managed. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a bit about the situation of peatlands in Peru, where you live? Sure, that's a, a, a very special place. First of all, I want to make a difference between peatlands here in Indonesia and peatlands over there in, in Peru. Peatlands in Indonesia, most of them are destroyed. I, that's my understanding because of a lot of uh, oil palm plantations. What happened in Peru is quite different. Over there we have different fruits. As a matter of fact, I talked this morning about aguaje, palm tree. That's a uh, de very delicious fruit. And we have about ten mi uh, five million hectares of that fruit. That, that plant provides economy, provides food, provides also biodiversity. So our approach over there in Peru is how to preserve, how to manage well those peatlands with a lot of aguaje, that part that I'm talking about. Because it's, we have that approach, rather than destroying those peatlands, we are using and managing. And that's the difference that we have about peatlands over there in the Amazon, in Peruvian Amazon, and also here in, in Indonesia. In Indonesia, um, after the fire and haze crisis of 2015, the Indonesian national government instituted a no-burn policy on the peatlands. Has the Peruvian government have similar measures in terms of policy to manage them? You know, how, what was their approach? I know they're two very different situations. We don't have that kind of problems in terms of burning peatlands because over there the approach is preserving those peatlands because we have already a product coming from peatlands like aguaje fruits, fishery and timber and so on. So we are taking care of those peatlands because that's economy. We don't need to destroy them. Just preserving and having a good management system in order to keep uh, helping local people and also the national economy. And I know you have a lot of experience uh, working with local communities. 
what do you think is the best way to engage them and mobilize them to get involved in the preservation of wetlands and forests? I tell you something. I was lucky to work in different parts of the world. I work in Africa, I work in, in the Amazon. I believe the approach that works, that works the best is just to go to the, to the open mind, to, to talk with local farmers and trying to learn from there what they know the best. We, in general, we make big mistakes trying to go over there and try to teach how to manage the, the biodiversity. The local farmers, they are the best of the best in terms of uh, local management of biodiversity. Mm. And Dennis, what drew you here today, the Global Landscapes Forum? Uh, just trying to learn how you are dealing with peatlands over here in Indonesia. And also to exchange ideas with people from other places, from Africa, from other, other parts of Asia, even from the Amazon, because I met some Peruvians over here that I never met over there in Peru. So that's a good opportunity to exchange experience and to see what we can do with for the future and also to work closely mm -hmm. with those very important issues. Thank you, Dennis. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.